Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. We're in our lovely Gazelle today and we're going to be looking at the autopilot mode. So we're going to be looking at speed hold, radar altitude hold and the auto hover mode. So keys that we're going to be needing today are auto hover toggle and auto collective toggle. So first of all let's look at auto uh, speed hold and radar altitude hold. So, uh, the switch we're going to be looking at, so you would have done your hot, uh, cold start and you would have all these switches up already. Then the switch we're looking at is altitude, uh, sorry, autopilot master switch here. We've got three modes. Off is in the middle, down is speed hold, and up is altitude hold. So, we're going to take off. We Just going to get going, get it flying. Just get it roughly stable so that I can take my hands off the controls for a second. Okay, that's pretty good. So we're going to pull it down. Now now it's going to hold my speed. It's, um, it's The speed needle, needle may bounce back and forwards a little bit, but generally it's going to hold that speed to where it is there. Okay, so if I were to add some collective, we'll see that my altitude can go up. My altitude is going up now, but it's keeping me at the same speed. And if I were to reduce my collective, it's going to reduce the altitude, but it's going to keep it at the same speed. So that's speed hold. Next. It might be important to mention that uh, both the altitude and the speed hold mode basically only function by modifying your pitch angle. Roger. So next we're going to show the radar altitude hold. So the first thing is we have to be above 120 clicks per hour to do this. And we have to be roughly level in the first place. Uh, we can't switch it on when we're going up. So we're going to use our vertical velocity, vertical velocity gauge there and speed over here to determine that. So let's try that. We're raising, rising a little bit, but no, let's try that there. Okay. Now we're going to turn it on. Right click to up. It's now up. It's now going to hold our altitude for us. So we look on our radar altitude here. It's going to hold whatever that says, um, 80 meters or something like that. So now if I were to push the collective forward, instead of rising and sinking, it now just pushes our speed up. You can see our speed's increasing, but it keeps, it keeps the same altitude. Um, and it's as simple as that, basically. And if I want to... Um, oh, and it's radar altitude, so it will go over hills, but probably not major hills, probably... Um, usually only minor hills. Uh, okay, we're going to turn it off now, get rid of that. Next, we're going to do auto hover. So I'm going to turn this here to DOP. And what that gives us is our uh, two guidelines. Uh, we've got a left to right lateral guideline here and a forwards and backwards lateral guideline here. What I want to do is get them centered right in the center. That will mean that I'm not basically moving forwards, backwards or leftwards, left and right. And our vertical velocity here, I want to get it at zero. So basically, I've got to put it in a hover, a pilot-induced hover, first of all, before I can in induce the auto hover. What are the exact thresholds there, Stahl? Uh, it's not more than 18 kph in any direction uh, horizontally, no more than 60 meters per second climb or sink, and no more than 30 degree pitch or bank angle. Roger, right. So I'm not very good at this, so just stand by as I try and get it... Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chase that, that line on the left until I get in the center. And you see the, um, the horizontal line is currently down at the bottom, which means I'm actually moving forward, although it doesn't look like it. I am moving forward, so it just takes a little bit of time to get this balanced. I'm going to go backwards a bit, try and get that line up. Left a bit, try and get that line. Ah, it's harder than it looks. And just to help, I'm going to put this, uh, show my controls on the left now so you can see my control inputs. Come on. Uh, here we go. Yep, you see that line moving up to the center. I've got to get them centered as well as my vertical velocity gauge on the left. So a little more power, a little to the right. Once you get used to this, you'll be able to do it within, you know, a few seconds. I'm just a bit crap. A bit more power. Ever so slightly to the right. Okay, we're going to try engaging that there. No, it didn't accept it. We're pressing the, um, uh, the, the toggle button that we looked at earlier to try and engage it. And we got it there. That was close enough. And you can see on our little gauge here, on our little... Um, control display here hover is uh, is is engaged i got close enough i got those 
two lines close enough in the center, I got this engage close enough to zero that it would allow me to engage it. And now it's got me in a perfect hover. It may shift around for a little bit, but once it's settled, it will keep you in a perfect hover. And then you can do spotting or you can do gunning or whatever you're going to do from that. Um, send that it will keep wobbling a little bit. Also, I think you know that it will completely override the control. So to get out of this, you'll have to press the toggle again. Roger. So I can move my stick around, and it will just completely ignore me, basically. Now we have um, what do we have, Shaw? We have uh, collective override. So we can keep it in an auto hover, but we can take back control of the collective, i.e., the altitude. We're going to do that by pressing the C key. So I press that, and you can see the collective. Um, uh, sign has disappeared there and now it's going to allow me to control the up and down movements of the helicopter you see I put a collective up so I'm rising but it's keeping it in a hover so if I wanted to do pop-up attacks over a hill I could I could rise and then collective down would allow me to go down back down below the hill and um, that would uh, like I said allow me to do pop-up attacks while keeping my left right and forwards and backwards exactly the in the center as you can see here with those uh, with the cross Right, uh, that's pretty. That is actually that is actually a feature the real gazelle does not have. Um, it was just implemented here because otherwise it would be too difficult to fly the gazelle and employ the weapons uh, completely on the air because you would actually have to keep control of the collective while you're firing missiles and such. Yeah, and so be wary of that if you do play in multiplayer. As soon as you have a co-pilot uh, taking care of the weapons, that will not be a feature for you. You will have to do the collective manual. Roger. And it's obviously prudent to point out that this is a, a multiplayer chopper, so you can have one human player in this seat here and one human player in that seat there doing the gunning as the um, as the commander. Right. Uh, so in all in all, some pretty good um, autopilot systems. I'm happy with that. Anything you want to add to that, Shah? I think it covers right. all. Hope that helps, and we'll see you later.